What do you call a group of men waiting for a haircut? A barbecue. Today, I'm going to recap a 2009 action fantasy film called Solomon Cain. The film commences with the tale of the 16th century English and Spanish conflicts that occurred in North Africa. During a naval engagement, an English assassin named Solomon Cain successfully leads his men to triumph over the Spanish forces. Subsequently, Solomon and his crew stealthily infiltrate the Spanish stronghold. Within the castle, they encounter a vast room lined with innumerable mirrors. As some of his men approach the mirrors, a bizarre entity abruptly drags them into the reflective surfaces. Witnessing this oddity, one of Solomon's men suggests the presence of a malevolent spirit. Solomon immediately kills the man, declaring himself the sole demon in their midst. Without warning, the door to the throne room swings open. As Solomon enters, the door shuts behind him, and an eerie cold pervades the space. The Devil's Reaper materializes on the throne, announcing his intention to claim Solomon's soul, as their pact has concluded. Baffled by the agreement the Devil's Reaper alludes to, Solomon narrowly evades the sword aimed at him and leaps through a castle window. The Devil's Reaper refrains from pursuit, and Solomon escapes successfully. A year later in England, Solomon is found praying in a church, a protective cross tattoo adorning his back to ward off demonic assaults. Having resided in the church for a considerable period, Solomon repents and swears never to take another life. One day, a pastor asks Solomon to depart from the church, following a dream he experienced the previous night. The pastor believes that something beyond the church walls necessitates Solomon's presence. Reluctantly, Solomon leaves the church without a specific destination, wandering through wintry woodlands. Eventually, Solomon encounters three thieves who assault him and steal his possessions. Solomon remains silent as they beat him into unconsciousness. In his stupor, he dreams of his youth, revealing that he is the offspring of a king and has an elder brother, Marcus Cain. Solomon is seen quarreling with his father over Marcus being named the crown prince, while Solomon is compelled to become a priest. Despite Solomon's objections, his father stands firm in his decision, prompting Solomon to abandon the kingdom. En route, Solomon witnesses Marcus attempting to violate a young woman. As Solomon intervenes, Marcus becomes enraged and lashes out at him. Frustrated by Marcus' actions, Solomon inadvertently pushes him off a cliff. The scene transitions to the present, where Solomon awakens in a horse-drawn carriage after being rescued by the Crowthorn family. The Crowthorn family was composed of a father named William, a mother named Katharina, and their three offspring, Meredith, Samuel, and Edward. Solomon revealed to the Crowthorns his past involvement in violence and bloodshed, but he had since repented and vowed never to kill again. Upon hearing this, William invited Solomon to accompany them on a journey to explore new locales across the globe. En route, they stumbled upon a recently ravaged area strewn with eyeless corpses. As they investigated the scene, Meredith inadvertently discovered a young girl who had survived the ordeal. They welcomed her into their party. That evening, as they rested around a bonfire, the little girl recounted how the townspeople had attempted to incinerate a witch. However, the flames did not harm the witch, who then retaliated by massacring the townsfolk. Sensing something amiss with the girl, Solomon asked Edward to offer her his cross necklace. Surprisingly, she injured Meredith, leaving a black mark on her hand, and her visage contorted into something monstrous and repulsive. She attacked Solomon before taking flight into the sky. Simultaneously, a group of sorcerers called Malachi began wreaking havoc on various locations and recruiting new members, including the three thieves who had previously robbed Solomon. The Malachi recruits were directly supervised by their masked leader. The next morning, Samuel awakened Solomon and led him away from the horse-drawn carriage. Concealed by trees, they observed peculiar-looking troops abducting local residents. Solomon instructed Samuel to return to the carriage and inform William of the situation. Regrettably, by the time Samuel arrived, Malachi's forces had already taken William captive. Hearing Samuel's cry, Solomon hurried back to the carriage, where Malachi's troops noticed the black mark on Meredith's hand and proceeded to abduct her. When Solomon confronted Malachi's soldiers and their leader, he attempted to negotiate peace. 
As the leader of Malachi was unable to speak, he employed magic to communicate through his minions. The message to Solomon was a challenge to fight them. Having sworn off killing, Solomon naturally declined the request. Due to Solomon's refusal, one of Malachi's men fatally stabbed Samuel. Witnessing Samuel's demise, William and Katharina implored Solomon to help them combat Malachi's forces. Reluctantly, Solomon broke his vow and engaged Malachi's troop single-handedly. During the skirmish, Malachi's forces abducted Meredith, murdered Edward, and left William mortally wounded. Desperate, Solomon pursued the carriage transporting Meredith, but failed to catch up to it. Upon returning to assess William's state, Solomon discovered that the elderly man was still breathing. William asked Solomon to pledge to rescue Meredith and vanquish Malachi's forces as an act of atonement. After making this request, William passed away. Catherine handed Solomon a locket containing Meredith's picture and urged him to hasten her rescue. Solomon then departed on horseback, leaving Catherine in the forest. Along the way, Solomon eliminated all of Malachi's soldiers who attempted to obstruct him and liberated the captives in the horse-drawn carriage. He displayed Meredith's photograph, but none of the freed prisoners recognized her. After an extensive ride, Solomon seemed to have lost track of the unit transporting Meredith. He arrived at a church and informed a priest about his futile three-day pursuit of Malachi's forces on horseback. The cleric explained that the church was situated on the border of Somerset and Devonshire, which happened to be Solomon's birthplace. That night, Solomon sensed the presence of malevolent spirits near the church. The priest confirmed the existence of evil entities within the holy building and led Solomon to another room to reveal the afflicted church members who had been cursed by Malachi's troops. Now under the priest's care, they were fed and tended to. At this point, the priest pushed Solomon towards the cursed individuals so they could consume him. Fortuitously, Solomon fought them off and escaped the premises. Unexpectedly, Solomon encountered the three thieves who had assaulted him previously. Their visages had transformed, indicating their allegiance to Malachi's army. A battle ensued, during which Solomon eliminated two of the robbers. He intentionally spared the third, hoping to extract information about Meredith's location. However, the robber claimed that Meredith was deceased. Furious, Solomon hurled the thief towards the malevolent spirits in the church. Despairing over his failure to save Meredith, Solomon sought solace in alcohol. In his inebriated state, he met a man named Henry, who had served under Solomon during the war against the Spanish forces. Now, Henry implored Solomon to lead the fight against Malachi's army. Grief-stricken, Solomon declined Henry's proposal. That night, as Solomon slumbered, Malachi's troops seized and crucified him in a field. His intoxicated condition prevented him from resisting, and he surrendered without any intent to fight back. Suddenly, a carriage carrying prisoners passed by, and Meredith, still alive, was among them. Upon seeing Solomon, she cried out for him. Her efforts were successful, as Solomon finally opened his eyes and spotted Meredith. With tremendous effort, he tore his impaled hand free from the cross and fell to the ground. Providentially, Henry appeared to aid Solomon in his time of need. Subsequently, Henry whisked Solomon away from the location and brought him to a healer. After a few days, Solomon had recuperated, with even the nail marks on his palms vanishing. With Henry and a group of men, Solomon concocted a plan to assault Malachi's castle, which was actually his father's stronghold. Familiar with the secret passages, Solomon infiltrated the castle alongside Henry and a few others. However, their movements were detected by the witch who had wounded Meredith's hand. Solomon hurled a small knife, successfully killing the witch, but Malachi's forces soon encircled him. Outnumbered, Solomon retreated to a dungeon. There he released the prisoners and unexpectedly discovered his still-living father, bound by magical chains that Solomon struggled to undo. Solomon's father revealed that after Marcus' fall and grievous injury, numerous physicians and healers had failed to cure him. Desperate, Solomon's father summoned Malachi and agreed to a pact, risking everything including Solomon's soul. Although Marcus recovered, his face remained disfigured, and he now served as Malachi's squad leader. After recounting this tale, Solomon's father implored him to end his life as an act of atonement. 
Initially resistant, Solomon eventually complied. Solomon then instructed Henry to continue battling Malachi's forces while he confronted Malachi alone. Inside the castle, Malachi awaited Solomon's arrival, holding Meredith captive in a cage. As Solomon prepared to strike, Malachi vanished using his sorcery. Seizing the moment, Solomon unlocked the cage to free Meredith, but was stabbed in the shoulder by Marcus. Despite Solomon's attempts to reason with him, Marcus continued his assault. Malachi re-emerged, declaring that Solomon's soul had been cursed and would soon be claimed by a monstrous demon. He intended to use Meredith's innocent blood to unleash creatures trapped in another dimension. Acknowledging that Marcus was fully under Malachi's control, Solomon killed him by setting him ablaze. As a skirmish erupted between Solomon and Marcus, Malachi seized Meredith and lacerated her body. Her blood splattered, opening a portal to release the enormous, ember-composed demonic entity. The monstrous demon begins traversing the portal to pursue Solomon, while in a corner of the room, Malachi holds Meredith captive. Solomon recognizes that defeating the demon is impossible. Resigned to his fate, he intends to surrender his soul. However, just before his soul is taken, Solomon successfully shoots Malachi in the head, killing him. The portal then absorbs the souls of Malachi, Solomon, and the demon. As the portal closes, Solomon's body collapses onto the castle floor. In the film's conclusion, a tearful Meredith cries out beside Solomon's prone form on the castle floor. Unexpectedly, Solomon awakens as his soul returns to his body. Prior to his death, William had stated that Solomon could redeem his soul if he managed to rescue Meredith. Evidently, Solomon had saved Meredith moments before the soul-absorbing portal closed. Before departing the castle for new adventures, Solomon stands before the graves of his father and older brother. He shares that Meredith has reunited with her family, and the world is now liberated from the scourge of witchcraft and demons. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.